So imagine two teenage boys starting a computer company together, when one is 13 and one is 15, trying to strive in an industry dominated by IBM. That is the story of Microsoft. So Microsoft, what does Microsoft do? What is its value proposition? It's simple. It's an operating system. Not, there's not much computer company out there that sells computer software. Here is the graph of all consumer OS market share. Apple accounts for 3.8% of the software industry for consumers. You don't know how much Microsoft dominates the industry? 87.3%. And on top of that, one of its new value proposition is a new cloud computing business called Azure. So what is its customer segment? Professionals. There are some software that does not run in the Apple uh, operating system that runs in the Microsoft operating system. Gamers. Most gamers I know out there uses Microsoft Windows and especially mid and computer users because not everybody can afford Apple. And uh, also their new customer segment which is most companies that are trying to use computer cloud. Your customer relationship, uh, a big one is their centralized customer information, also known as the website of information, their customer service, and also social media. So what is their sales channel? Their sales channel is, is very easy to understand. It's that computer companies needs them. Dell, HP, MSI, Asus, and all other companies out there rely on Microsoft to run their hardware. And so they don't have that much physical store because all of the company that, other than Apple, that sells their computer pays a commission to Windows every time they make a computer. And so what do I learn about the company's management and business prospect? So, three years ago, there was a change in uh, CEO of this company from the old Steve Ballmer to the new Satya Nadella, right here. And the company's management, since that change, has improved a whole lot. When Steve Ballmer was in charge after Bill Gates stepped down as CEO, the company was in chaos. And right now, Satya Nadella has bring a lot of growth to this new and refreshed Microsoft company. One of the chaotic things they did was uh, buying Nokia, which at the end, after a couple of years reign with Microsoft, uh, was bankrupt. Another bad decision about the company's management is to buy a LinkedIn. It's a social media company. They bought it for $26.1 billion, but that does not turn out to be as successful as they want it to be. And a new part of the company, the Azure business, that is now driving the stock prices up, is helping Microsoft grow a lot. And this year, what I heard from the call, was that almost all divisions in Microsoft grow 10% to 20%. So this is Microsoft Corporation. It, it's listed as MSFT in the NASDAQ stock exchange. This is the price, Friday's price, 74.49 US dollars. So let's talk about the PE ratio. First of all, the PE ratio is the market value per share divided by earnings per share. Microsoft's PE ratio is 27.49, lower than 52% of the global software industry. And this tells us that the company is not overvalued, that it is a fair company at a fair price. Investors, uh, well, there's two types of investors. Some wants a low, PE ratio because it tells them that the company is 
is uh, running well and some wants a higher PE ratio because they want they want a company that will have growth in the future and this this company is almost in the middle because it's in the lower 52 percent it's almost in the median of this global software industry and the net margin the net margin of this company is 23.57 percent higher than 93 percent of industry and this is the software industry software industry is probably one of the highest net margin industry because they do not have uh, they have a price what they do is they have a lot of workers programming their software and then after that they can distribute the software without any other uh, price so in this industry normally the net margin is high but Microsoft was able to be in the top nine in the top seven percent of the of this industry it shows that this company is, has high profitability and possibly for us investors could result in higher dividends and this shows the company has good management so this is how you count the net margin uh, net profit before tax but after the dividend is given to preferred stocks owner not the common stocks owner and the next is the ROE return on equity this is how you find return on equity the net income of the company divided by the certain shareholders equity or you might know it as asset its ROE is 30 percent higher than 91 percent of the industry it shows a high return rate for shareholders equity it has great this shows the company has great management and a great conversion rate from asset they have that they can allocate to making the comp to make the company profitable and to the profit of the company so the big question is should we keep or sell this company I think we should keep the company because it's growing number one this company has a mar high market share of its industry this is the graph I showed to you before it holds 87.3 of the global consumer operating system industry you say to me this is monopoly I don't want to buy a company that that is monopolizing because hey one day they might be they might go to court and the stock might fall down but no back a couple of years ago uh, this company was in court for monopoly but because of a technicality they got out of the court so now monopoly is not a problem for this company anymore 